So at this point, we've uh, drawn some uh, some letters. Uh, I could uh, further draw interesting shapes. Let's say I wanted to draw for fun. Let's take it one next level up. Let's say I wanted to draw the bat signal. So the bat signal obviously is more complex than some letters. So let's try that. Uh, let's draw the bat signal. So I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to hide and turn into a guide the other layers. So a new layer and I'll call it bat signal. I'll keep that lowercase just to get into the habit of keeping these layers with a lowercase no spaces because later on when we talk about coding this is when uh, it will matter the most. Now Batman is 75 years old. There's been many versions of the bat signal. We're going to draw one version of it. Uh, we could look on the web and cheat and see what it looks like beforehand, sure, or we can uh, make one off the top of our heads, kind of. So here's what we'll do. Let's um, start off with a circle shape. These guides are going to get in my way, so what I can do is view guides, clear guides. I don't need those guides anymore. They're in my way, so I'm going to go to view menu, guides, clear guides. I could also show or hide them, but I'll just remove them. Clear guides. I'm going to start with a circle. And black with a golden edge, possibly. We'll start with no edge yet, and then we can add one later. We can see that. Uh, I'm going to start with a with a color. So, okay, circle. Oops, that's not a circle. That is not a kind of a circle. There's a circle. So yes, there's versions that are in oval. There are versions that are triangular. Many versions. They're all they're all good. So let's say this. Then I'm going to make another circle with a different color. I'm going to cut out a top shape over here. Now, unfortunately, I drew a shape where I kind of wanted it, but it wasn't quite where I wanted it. If I try to move it now, it cut it already. One quirk of Flash is that as soon as you draw it, it deselected it. I would have liked to have it drawn and still selected. There's other ways to do that for the moment. I, I want to draw it, but outside of the of the shape, um, or else it'll cut it. So I'm going to take that back, and I'm going to draw the, the circle up over here somewhere. I'm not going to worry about like the sizes and proportions just yet. I'm going to freestyle it for a bit. Let's say some kind of circle. Then I'll move it on top over here. Deselect kind of looks like an olive there. And then move it over. OK, I'm getting this top curve of the wings. Based on that same circle, but maybe a little larger, maybe a little smaller. I want to then cut out the bottom part. Let's see, maybe a little larger. So I'll take that same shape and make it a little larger, just a little bit, and then move it to the bottom so I can start to cut out somewhere on the bottom. OK, so I'm getting that kind of shape. One circle out of two circles. One shape minus two circles. Move that shape off to the side. I may use it again. I want to make the top of the cowl, the bat head, with the little pointy uh, ears. Uh, so here's how I'll start this. I'll get the square. Square shape. I want to make two, two points here. Well, this could be another way where I can cut out the top part many ways to do this. 
but I want to cut out the top shape again like I was doing for the V and such. So with a copy of that square, switch to the select to selection tool. Remember, I, I would recommend take a moment during lab time and such, hover your mouse over all of these tools, especially the ones we use today, and check the keyboard shortcut. It's going to be so much faster to simply click the right letter than moving your mouse over to the tool, especially when you're on a roll. So I want to then rotate this. Q for quick transform. V back to select so that I can go to the top. I'm going to zoom in to see it further. And then arrow keys to move that shape. But whoops, I'm about to put a black shape on a black shape. It's not going to cut it. I believe since it's selected, I can still change the color just in time. Yeah, so it's still selected. I changed the color. So a color, different color on another color. Now I can deselect. Now I can move it away. Now I've got a cut at the top. Well, I like that, but I, I need to kind of extend the bottom part of that a bit. I like the top pointy ears, but I'd like to extend this a little bit lower. With the sub selection tool, I can grab those two points at the bottom and stretch them down a bit. Sub select tool is A on the keyboard, and I want to move these two points down some amount equally. Because if I grab the one on the right and move it down, it may not line up exactly with the one on the left. Hold shift and click them both. Hold shift and click them both. Perfect. So if you click one and then shift and click the other, you can select them both, more than one. In this case, quickly, what I could have also done is a selection like that. Sometimes shift clicking is tedious. In this case, I could have simply just clicked and dragged make a little selection around those two pieces. So from out here, I'll click and drag to make a selection. They're selected with my arrow keys. I can hold Shift down, stretch it out some amount, whatever you feel is good. And then I can grab that shape and put it up here. I think we need to get Tim Burton on the phone. We've got the next Batman logo coming up. We need the point at the bottom. Let's do that one kind of easy with a triangle. We have the Polystar tool to make triangles quickly. So if I go over to Polystar, Options, Polygon of 3, I want to draw the point at the bottom a triangle pointing down. With the Polystar tool, if I click and drag upward, I get an upward pointing triangle. If I click and drag downward, I get a downward pointing triangle. So some sort of triangle pointing downward. I need that as the same color so that they'll merge. Made it a little too small, so I can easily free transform it. In this case, the snap is getting in my way. I'll turn the magnet off again. If these items are kind of jumping around in a way that you don't like, you can turn that on or off. So then if I further wanted some curves here, remember, maybe this bottom point, I can go in and grab that edge and bend it in a little bit. 
with another tool later on we would be able to bend these things at exact angles that we may want but for the moment I just went in and brought them in a little bit maybe even the top there have been so many versions of the of the bat signal so something like this could have existed. If you look at some of these uh, versions, um, they're very symmetrical, these shapes, basic shapes that uh, get created from larger shapes. So here's something that I've got here. I could still put more flourishes and some of those other points and such that so many versions have, but here's what I've got so far. Um, any questions? It's pretty interesting how you're able to put these shapes together, merge them, cut them. This was drawn in a vector program, so I'm able to increase, decrease the size. And there's a little gap right there. Can we put an edge on it now that it's a full object? Oh, sure, let's do that. So, this shape right now is just a fill, it's the inside of a shape. Earlier, I had said we have a stroke, we have a fill, we have no stroke at the moment to the object. If we want to add a stroke, there's a tool right here. The paint bucket lets you fill in the inner color of a shape. And then the ink yeah. bottle. It doesn't look like an ink bottle anymore. It used to look like an ink bottle. But that is the ink bottle tool. And that is representing that you can then fill a, an outside color. So if I select ink bottle, I have various stroke sizes that I can select. And now we've got, instead of filling in an inner color, which is crossed out, we can fill an outer color, the stroke. So ink, ink bottle or ink bucket, what's it called? Ink bottle, ink bottle. It doesn't look like an ink bottle. But you can uh, choose a color for your outside, a style and a stroke and all that other stuff that we'll look at. Let's say maybe I'll start it off with a five stroke. You can type a number and press enter if you want it exact. Click on the object. In my case, there was a little gap when I put the head on the rest of the body. And so it also put a stroke right there, right there. We'll have an exercise where we really talk about strokes in detail later, but for the moment, I can click on that little piece of stroke and click it to select it and delete. And now I've got the object. Yes. When we're dealing with objects that have an inner color and an outer color, this is why it's most important to double click the object to select it. When I double click the object, I can move it. If I didn't double click it, if I only click one time and move, oh, I only fill, I only move the inside, not the outside. And we're going to have a, a, an activity later on about this in more detail, but. Here is my project. I've been looking at it this whole time in, in Animate, um, but I want to look at it as a, a regular person would see it on a website or in a project. So we need to test. We need to run the, the project. Wherever you're at here, I'm going to save it. Let's go up to Control Menu, Test. I want to see the result as a regular person would see it. It'll process it. This is where we're going to get this warning or error. 
which we'll ignore. And then it loads it up in the web browser. And there's my design. So here's my project so far. Uh, I could keep tweaking it. I could keep exploring. We're going to have eventually uh, homework assignments uh, to create various uh, drawings and animations, of course. But if you had never used Animate before, one of the first things I like to talk about is how it merges, how it crops, how these shapes are malleable, how they can be changed. So we did some letters, we did a more interesting shape. Um, all of this work that we did here, we you want to save it, you're not gonna turn it in or anything, but I will uh, do the lab in a moment, and I'm going to go around and kind of check people's work out a little bit, just to kind of see how, how things worked. I'm interested to see how everyone did this. So we're going gonna, gonna to take final questions, and we'll end the main lecture and do some lab time. I would recommend you practice the concepts we did here. We didn't do your initials. Maybe do your initials. See what you can think of that. Uh, and then eventually we'll have more and an assignment. But for the moment, any questions on any of the things we looked at today? All right, so we're going to have lab time. You can take a break and then start your lab time. I'm going to go around the lanes and look at people's work for a moment. And uh, if you have any questions, call me or the lab crew over, and we'll help you out.